you make films that are highly authentic, but also cinematic? As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. This happens to be a theme with our next director. Today, we'll be breaking down the directing style of Martin Scorsese. It's very difficult to describe how inspiration hits you, where it comes from. For me, there was no difference between the ring <laughs> and the sidewalk and the bedroom. It's different levels of intensity. And it has a narrative of its own. I'd be a millionaire. What do you think of that? It's nearly impossible to define a director's cinematic style by analyzing a single piece of the filmmaking puzzle. We're going to show you how Scorsese approaches his decisions across seven areas of focus, so that you can see how each little detail makes up the entire picture. Before we jump into our examples, make sure to subscribe below and click the bell icon to stay in the loop. Let's jump in. Our first subject story. Scorsese tends to build stories that take place in immoral worlds. This can be Wall Street. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich! <laughs> or organized crime. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Martin Scorsese is all about character. They can be self-destructive, Obsessive. More than anything, Scorsese loves flawed characters. Take Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver. Travis is surrounded by an immoral world. Let a bitch be cool. He is isolated, a complicated man who is both driven into madness by the world around him, but yet determined to take charge. Listen, you fuckers, you screwheads. Here is a man who would not take it anymore. A man who stood up against the scum, the cunts, the dogs, the filth, the shit. Here is someone who stood up. Scorsese crafts his scenes in a way where we empathize with Travis. You sure a young girl, you should be at home now. Look, you walk out with those fucking creeps and lowlifes and degenerates. Out of we believe his intentions are pure even if we don't agree with his methods. That's it, man. Give me the rest hey. of the fucking bread. Hey. So remember, if you want to approach story like Martin Scorsese, look for flawed characters, some of which live in immoral worlds. Because these characters live in high-stakes settings, you'll always have an opportunity for an exciting scene. We need to tenderize this meat a little bit. <laughs> to learn how to build better character arcs, Check the description for a link to our series on character development, where we provide you with a step-by-step -step guide to craft more compelling characters. Our second subject, production design. Scorsese often places his stories in authentic worlds and surrounds them with raw, gritty, and realistic imagery. Real apartments, real restaurants, real villages. Set in cities such as Paris, Tibet, Japan, Boston, and of course, New York. There's no sci-fi, no fantasy, and this grounds his narratives in our world. Take a look at this sequence in The Wolf of Wall Street. You reach Frank's best auto body? We're closed right now, so please leave us a message. We begin at the auto garage. The building is dusty. The AC unit is ill-hung, askew. The available sign hangs ever so slightly. And wardrobe? Each of Jordan's hometown friends from Queens is dressed in a way that not only informs us of their character, but makes us think, I know someone back home that dresses like that. And that makes it relatable. There's no such thing as Amish boot or some pretty fucking show. No, I need a club, 
The characters may seem ridiculous, especially Brad, the ultimate mook. I'm watch. I'm watch. I'm so remember, if you want to approach production design like Martin Scorsese, surround your characters in the most realistic and raw environments. It may not be flashy stylistically, but that may be a good thing if you want the viewer to relate to your characters. Make sure to check the description below for a free production design video masterclass that will help you identify and capitalize on every production design element in your scenes. Our third subject, color. Often, Scorsese avoids bold color grades and choices that may distract, though he does like to use color to signal danger. A color can be associated with characters as an identifying mark. Look at Sam Rothstein's suit. It's ostentatious. Color can draw unwanted or unintended attention. What the fuck are you doing on TV anyhow? You know I get calls from back home every fucking day. Which is a bad idea when you operate in an immoral and secret world. Let's take a look at Goodfellas. Nobody knows for sure just how much was taken in the daring pre-dawn raid. The gang has just pulled off the biggest heist of their lives. The FBI says $2 million. Port Authority police say $4 million. The city cops say five. And when one of the gang members makes a large purchase, Is it she gorgeous? they could have made the car white or silver or any other color, but he chose pink. Why? Because the point of the car is to draw attention. Don't buy anything, don't get anything, nothing big. The exact thing Jimmy was hoping to avoid. What are you getting excited for? What am I getting excited about? Because you're going to get us all fucking pinched, that's why. What are you, stupid? What's the matter with you? I apologize. What's the matter with you? So remember, if you want to approach color like Scorsese, take advantage of color as a narrative device, something that not only elicits emotion on a psychological level, but also draws attention to your characters. Make sure to check the description below for a free ebook on using color in film, where we provide numerous examples of color schemes from your favorite films and help you find the right color palette for your own projects. Our next subject, cinematography. Great cinematography is a combination of many different techniques like lighting, camera movement, lens choice, and framing. Scorsese likes to use practical lights to help illuminate his scenes, which helps with the authentic look. He will use pans, tilts, zooms, and large camera moves to simulate and enhance the emotion of the scene. Take the camera work in Cape Fear. He will use a slow camera move to build dread and suspense. Or a fast camera move to inject energy. If someone is surprised, he will amplify this with a quick push in. Another Scorsese trademark across his films, when a character dies, he often shows them in an overhead shot. You often get the feeling that these shots represent God or the afterlife. He was raised Catholic, after all. So remember, if you want to take a chapter from Scorsese's cinematography, use practical lights in the frame to help illuminate your scene and tie your camera movement to emotion. Make sure to check the description below for a free cinematography techniques cheat sheet that provides dozens of helpful tips that will hone your craft. For Scorsese, camera work isn't enough to make things cinematic. Howard Hughes is now editing some 25 miles of film. Our next subject, editing. Scorsese and his editor, Thelma Schoonmaker, have a few calling cards. One is their ability to cut out dull moments. There is a blistering pace and energy provided by the cuts. That was quick. 
Take the chase scene from The Departed. As William follows Colin, we have quick little slices of imagery cut in for energy and context. Feet on the pavement, bodies walking in front of the frame, obscuring both our view but also William's. As he tries to focus, the sound is pulled out. It's a jagged chase, achieved with jagged cuts and slow motion. The sudden appearance of a car, screeching to a halt. When William's phone rings, we get three quick cuts on his face. And as the tension grows and Colin readies his knife, the edit slows down. Quite possibly, one of the most notable editing techniques Scorsese uses is voiceover narration combined with montage. In Vegas, everybody's got to watch everybody else. Take this scene from Casino. He uses his pans to blend cuts together, as if the camera were jumping around the casino floor. Watching the floormen, the shift bosses are watching the pit bosses, the casino manager is watching the shift bosses. I'm watching the casino manager, and the eye in the sky is watching us all. Even into the back room and the rafters. Plus, we had a dozen guys up there, most of them ex-cheats, who knew every trick in the house. So remember, if you want your editing to take lessons from Scorsese's films, Use the energy and pacing of your cuts to support the motivation behind each moment in your scene. Use montage and voiceover to support the intentions of the scene. Benny fucking Hanna! Benny fucking Hanna! Why? Why, why, God? Why would you be so cruel as to choose a chain of fucking hibachi restaurants to take me down? Next, sound design. Scorsese's sound design is all about enhancing the action on screen. Take the scenes in Raging Bull, where Scorsese and his sound designer, Frank Warner, used various sounds to enhance the energy in the scene. Sometimes it was dry ice on glass. He used the bray of an elephant during punches. <laughs> or a horse shudder. Other times, the drum, distorted, tapped a time or two. Scorsese often uses sound design to help mask or even punctuate cuts with a pop of the flash bulbs. And when something is really important, the richest sound you have to offer is silence. Remember, if you want to use your sound design to take lessons from Scorsese, use unconventional and exaggerated sounds to support the visuals. Focus on creating a mood. (laughs) 
There is one more thing that Scorsese is known for. Music. Scorsese uses music in his films a lot. He leans towards rock music. I did my fucking time, Jimmy. I did my fucking time. I come home and I want what I gotta get. I got fucking mouths to feed. Understand? Yeah. He's been quoted as saying he cuts his films to music linked to his memories as a child where neighbors had their radios faced towards the street. Music poured down on him from the city windows above and will often have scenes with diegetic music which is when the source of the music inhabits the physical space of the scene. And the style of music could be described as fun. Scorsese loves to let the music in his films help to dictate the rhythm of his cut. Come on, Babu. Take this scene from The Departed. We begin the scene outside. The music is there, but it's muted. I can't do anymore. I cannot Please. move off. And Please don't let me go back empty-handed. Please don't do this. When we move inside, the music is louder but still in the background, as if it were playing over the convenience store radio. You keep on calling me Babu is sing, motherfucker. I I'm trying to help you. you keep on you telling me I'm your friend. Yeah. You don't even know my fucking name. You want me to so when William goes to pay the store owner. Excuse me, gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, you fellas come from Providence? Is any business where we come from, is it now? Whatever in cannolis or something. <laughs> <laughs> The sound has been turned up, and the energy of the music matches the energy of the scene. So remember, if you want to use music the way Scorsese does, let the rhythm influence your cut. Build scenes that can have a diegetic source of music, blend both of the moments together for greater impact. To see the entire fight scene from The Departed shot by shot, make sure to check the description below for a link to the storyboard. So how does Scorsese build films that are both authentic, but also cinematic? Scorsese is drawn towards authentic stories and often uses real-life accounts for his films. He uses production design that heightens the authenticity and dissolves the barrier between viewer and screen. He uses color as a narrative device and avoids distracting color grades. His cinematography is tied to the character's emotions and will support them by any means necessary. Very stylized. For Scorsese and Schoonmaker, there is a blistering pace and energy provided by the cuts. His sound design can be extreme <laughs> and at other times non-existent. He uses real-life music that inspires both his visuals and his cut. The result? His films have a heightened sense of reality, ground in style. They are both authentic, but also cinematic. There are even more Martin Scorsese filmmaking techniques. Which didn't we touch on? Which are your favorite? Was all this legal? Absolutely fucking not. Tell us in the comments. Don't forget to sign up for Studio Binder. It's free to get started. Subscribe to our channel below, click the bell icon for notifications, and follow us on our Instagram page. We'll see you in the next video.